port. Here we go. This is an NBC News special report. Here's Savannah Guthrie. Hi, everybody. Good morning. And in just a few moments, we will witness a historic event in this new era of commercial space travel. Let's go to Van Horn, Texas, where William Shatner, Captain Kirk himself, is among those boldly going where few have gone before. He is headed to space. He's aboard a rocket owned by Jeff Bezos's company, Blue Origin. The 90-year-old actor will make history as the oldest person to ever fly in space. We're about three and a half minutes from launch right now. He is part of a four-person crew that loaded into the capsule just a few mo moments ago, ready to blast off from this launch site in West Texas in just a few minutes. We're about 30 seconds. There have been some holds this morning, so they're a bit delayed, about 45 minutes delayed, but we're about to watch it happen. And I want to bring in Tom Costello, who covers space and aviation for us. And Tom, give us a sense of what these astronauts can expect today. Well, they, within two minutes of launch, so two to three minutes once they're off the, uh, actually off the tower, they're actually going to have a, a separation from the rocket. The capsule will be separated from the booster rocket. The spaceship will continue on towards its apogee, hitting a height of about 62 miles up over that Kármán line, the delineation uh, internationally recognized for space. And that's when they will get that three to four minutes of weightlessness. And that's about it, right? Three to four minutes of weightlessness before the capsule starts coming back down again, descending under parachutes back down to Earth. So the total trip here is 11 minutes. It's very similar to what they did in July on the first mission, but this one has Captain Kirk, and that's why we're here, 90 years old, and he tells me he's nervous about this. I said, wait a minute, you battled Romulans and Klingons, and he said, yeah, but this is real life, and he is nervous, but he's excited. Tom, we are in IRL, in real life, and this is about to happen. We're just a few moments from launch. Uh, that's the launch pad. Now, this is a capsule, and we're starting to see some movement here that will be released from a booster rocket. The booster rocket will then land back to Earth while the capsule, as you mentioned, is catapulted past the Kármán line. Remember that? That is the internationally recognized place where space begins, and they will feel that zero gravity. And what a ride down as well, because then they're going to feel five times the, 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 the feel of gravity. Gravity. Yeah, that's right. And the entire trip, I mean, I think we, we should underscore, comes right back down here to the same place where they lift off from. There's a landing zone not far away. Just as that spaceship is hitting the ground, retro rockets fire to give it a very gentle uh, settling down uh, into the desert sand here in West Texas. They have been practicing dozens of times over and over and over again, getting in and out of those seats so they don't get stuck unable to get back in the seats when they descend again. But what's so critical is enjoying those three to four minutes of weightlessness that they're promised. We're about a minute away from launch now, a T minus one minute. I've always wanted to say that, Tom. But just so people are clear, the, the astronauts aboard this mission are not flying this aircraft. It's remote controlled in essence. All control from the ground, and on board, you don't have any professional astronauts at all. They won't be astronauts until they go into space uh, in just a few minutes. We've about 30 seconds to go here. I want to bring in Mike Massimino, who is a former NASA astronaut, logged many hours in space. Just what these folks might be feeling in this moment as the, they're probably starting to feel a little rumble beneath them, Mike. Uh, hi, Savannah. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of anticipation, probably thinking about things like how they got there. Each one took a different path to, to get there, remembering those things and realizing that they, they ended up this day on board that rocket ready to go. Let's listen in and watch this launch, Blue Origin, headed to space with Billy Michelle. trajectory, the boost
booster and the capsule to last well, about three minutes or so? The base of the screen as well. Yeah, actually, at two minutes, they have separation between the booster and the capsule. We have confirmed max Q. This is when the, the, the aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle were at their maximum. Let's make the point, if we can, Savannah, we are listening to the voice of Blue Origin Mission Control. This is not NASA. This is a private company's voice of mission control. And we are, we are very much dependent on their voice and their knowledge as to what's going on. And the folks aboard that capsule have been prepped for all the bumps, all the feelings, all of the noises that they may be experiencing right now. That was part of their safety training, right, Tom? Thank you again, everybody, for joining us live. That's for right. New Shepherd's and second human flight with Audrey Powers, again, you're, William you're Shatner, listening to the, 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 the voice of Blue Origin there. And on board, they are well on their way to space. So far, a nominal flight, a clean burn on our Blue Engine 3. New Shepard giving them a beautiful flight to space this morning. Nominal, of course, is uh, NASA terminology, meaning it's all going great. Um, you're absolutely right. So they have been practicing this dozens of times for the last few days, over and over and over again. And listen, you know, at the age of 90, it's not necessarily easy to get in and out of that seat. That's what Shatner has been working on. Now we've had main engine cut off. The BE3 engine has shut off. And in just a moment, we are going to separate the capsule from the booster. And at that point, our astronauts will have the opportunity to get out of their harnesses and enjoy the beauties of zero G. Let's wait to listen. You can see a clean separation between the capsule and the booster. That's a beautiful shot. Now, Savannah, we are going to be very much just dependent on listening to open microphones inside the spaceship. And there you can see the capsule hear them from enjoying the top of the booster. Zero G. Tom, do you they expect are to see their ascent over the Carmen any line? signal from, You'll know from the, the uh, capsule when itself? The speed hits zero. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Savannah, did not catch your question. My apologies. What did you say? Well, you, you, you talked about the open mics. We might hear some from inside the capsule. Would you expect to see any images, or is that something we'll see later? Our crew capsule. If, it's, if we follow the same script as in July, they provide most of those images after they're back down on Earth. So um, I think what we can bank on, hopefully, are, is the live audio feed of them enjoying zero G. And then once they are back down on Earth, we should see those images released. Now, the capsule is going about 65 but it's a very miles short up into, trip. The, into that. Very short. I was going to say, when you're riding a fast feet. rocket, you get there quick. At about 350. Yeah, exactly. I mean, literally, feet. it's an 11-minute trip, right? So they're they are uh, almost halfway through the trip already. Jackie, they are having the time of their lives. So we're getting the narration from the Blue Origin. Uh, official telling us what she must be seeing or hearing in terms of the crew now experiencing zero G, that kind of iconic moment that so many people dream of. Um, and they'll get to experience that for about three minutes. And in the meantime, Tom, that it's, it's fascinating in such a feat of technology, that booster rocket that carried them to this place will be landing, almost a pinpoint landing, so it can be reused again. It's exactly the, the same technology in, in some way, the same idea that SpaceX uses, Elon Musk uses, to make SpaceX become a viable, uh, you know, alternative to essentially losing Thank you again, your booster everybody for joining uh, rockets as soon as you use them up. Texas so, far, so it will come right back down and land right crew. back down here on Earth. You know, we should also make the point, Savannah, that this is now the 18th mission, the 18th mission for Alan Shepard. The, the New Shepard, I should say, the New Shepard rocket, named after Alan Shepard. From Australia. The last one had humans on it. This one has humans on it. All the others were test flights. As well as Glenn DeVries and our very own Audrey Powers.
Let's they bring in Joan Higginbotham, the also an astronaut who has spent hundreds of hours in space. And uh, Joan, you, you are one of the few that could describe how they might be feeling right now, experiencing zero gravity for the first time. Yeah, thank you, Savannah, for having me on. I just want to say hi to Mike Massimino, my classmate. So um, if you're up there experiencing zero G, they're, they're probably, I would best say, they're like a kid at a candy store. It's uh, the first time you get to experience it is, is a real treat. Um, you have no, no choice but to float up to the top of the cabin wherever you are. Um, and it, it's just a thrill to be able to do things in a microgravity micro environment that you never get to do in your everyday life. Mm. And, and Mike, I uh, want we'll bring you in here. You can say hi back to your colleague, Joan. But also, what is the view like up there? This is a suborbital uh, trip to space, so they're not in space orbit. What might they be seeing out that window? Well, first, hi, hi, Joni. Great to see you. Um, uh, yeah, they're, they're seeing some things. You can kind of get an idea by, by the shots we're seeing. One cool thing is the sky goes dark on you, even though it's, it's you know the sun's out. When you get above the atmosphere, you're, you look at the stars and around you, and you see a, a black sky. But looking back down on the Earth, yeah, they're not really that high relative to where the space station is, for example. They're 60 miles up, as Tom explained. You can see some detail, but you also can see, I think, from where they are, some you know the horizon. Uh, the, the beauty of the Earth, you don't see the borders, so you're seeing things with a much different perspective than anything you can get on Earth or even in an airplane. So it's, a, it's really a, an awe-inspiring moment when you unstrap, float to the window, and this spaceship was meant for viewing the Earth with big windows and looking down at our, at our home. It really can be a, a life-changing experience, and I think it will be for each of them. And meanwhile, back here on Earth, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, we just witnessed the return to Earth of that booster capsule about two miles from where it embarked a few minutes ago. They nailed the landing right on the money. We had a sonic boom here on the ground, and this is just amazing technology that they're able to bring that rocket booster right back down and uh, and nail it right here in the West Texas desert. So that is what's making this uh, economical for companies like Blue Origin, like SpaceX, to uh, be taking people into Earth, uh, back to I'm sorry, into space and back to Earth. And I'm watching now the feed of the space capsule now descending as well. There's a little bit of a lag time before it hits uh, the, the air, but we are seeing now the space capsule underneath parachutes. It, too, is now starting to descend down to Earth. So all of this appears to have gone absolutely perfectly so far as the feed will very quickly now switch over to the spaceship. So here's the capsule. Our astronauts are aboard, and we can call them astronauts now because they've been to space. And this is, they describe it as a high-speed plunge back to Earth, at least before the parachutes are deployed. And your body has to be able to withstand 5G, five times the force of gravity. Uh, we'll turn to our astronauts for this. Mike Massimino, I'll start with you. What does that feel like? I mean, that's got to be pretty tough on the body. Some people can get that tunnel vision. Some people pass out. Uh, what would you expect? Well, I, I think they'll be fine. The way that the spacecraft is is designed, they have these seats you're recumbent, you're laying down. So whatever any G-forces you take, you're going to take those in the chest. But that's why it's really important to be strapped back in into the seat. And then we talked about getting out and getting back in. You want to be back in your seat and lying down in that seat to protect you from those Gs. It'll be a little uncomfortable. I felt like we took up the three Gs on launch, for example. I felt like there's you know, three times your body weight. I felt like there were three big dudes sitting on me. That's what it kind of <laughs> felt like. And then, it, and then it subsides. But it's interesting because they've been weightless for a little bit. And so whatever Gs they take on the way down is going to even be amplified. Because after you float for a little bit and you get used to zero gravity, even a little bit of G feels like a lot. You see they're about, I would say, about 90 seconds or so from making that landing, Joan. Uh, what do you imagine is going through their minds right now? I mean, that was a very quick trip. It was an extremely trip quick, uh, quick trip, but I still know that they're just enamored at what they got to do, and they're still feeling that high from being able to look at our beautiful world from a different vantage point. So uh, even though they're going to be taking on a whole bunch of Gs right now, I know their mind is still on what they have just experienced. Tom, what do we expect as we uh, watch these final moments of their big mission to space? Uh, what's the protocol after 
they've just touched down there. We see that cloud of dust, so I think they're close to touchdown if they haven't already. The newest astronauts. Well, you know, you know what the headline is going to be around the world. Uh, Captain Kirk goes to space and comes back and lands safely. Uh, so this is a great day for him, a great personal triumph for him. And, and let's be candid, it's a big and a, and a great day for Blue Origin as well. Now, they will be on the ground for about 22 minutes before they will pull them or, or help them get out of the uh, capsule. They need to make sure that, that the entire vehicle is off-gassed, if you will. You get rid of all the potentially uh, dangerous fumes and gases. But this just has gone perfectly. And there was a quote, by the way, on Twitter from William Shatner. And he says the following. I'm going to quote William Shatner's tweet. Quote, I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore, diverting myself in now and then finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary, whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. So I think he's trying to wax poetic. I suspect he actually composed that e that tweet before he went up, and then he hit the send button. But I think so. uh, William I'm, Shatner is already tweeting. I'm being told, and uh, I, I confess to not knowing this off the top of my head, that it's a quote of Sir Isaac Newton, which, of course, is poetic uh, in its own right. But um, yes, I, he, it was a pre-programmed tweet that got sent. So we'll have to get the off-the-cuff response from William Shatner and his the fellow passengers. One of them is a Blue Origin uh, employee, and then the other two are paying customers. And Tom, this isn't a cheap ticket. It's a quick one, but it's not a cheap ticket. Quarter million dollars, uh, we believe, is how much that the two uh, paying passengers paid for this. And both of them are successful business uh, entrepreneurs who can afford it. Uh, William Shatner was invited to go along. Um, I got to tell you, I think they're paying him, in all honesty, because he's also uh, been asked to do so much media. You got to compensate the guy for his time. Uh, but I, so all of this is part of Blue Origin's big public relations push to get the message out about you. Uh, you know, putting people in space and the commercialization of space, the space tourism business. Uh, and, and, you know, Savannah, I'm, sh I'm not sure that you and I would be doing this coverage live on network television if it weren't for the fact that Captain Kirk is on board right now. Well, they're, they're good at space travel and they're good at PR, too. They know how to get attention and sending the original Captain Kirk to the place where uh, no man has boldly gone before. A few have is, is, is a good PR move, no question about it. It actually, you, you raise a good discussion point, and we're probably about 10 minutes or so before we see these astronauts disembark from this capsule and perhaps hear from them or at least get to read the looks on their faces. But Mike Massimino, I'll, I'll ask you, what to you is the value of a flight like this and this new era of commercial space travel? Well, Savannah, so I think what it what it does is it opens up the opportunities to fly in space, and not only for the people we see, but also for researchers, uh, experiments. My students, I teach at Columbia. Two years ago, they flew on one of those flights that we that they mentioned previously. Before they put people on board, they flew an experiment into space at low cost. So it opens it up for for research for for people who want to go to experience space flight as tourists or observers, as we see today. And it's not just for anybody, Every uh, just for a select few. Now it can be for more and more people. Granted, you need uh, some cash to go right now, but I think that that price is going to go down. And the, the automation involved, it doesn't take very much training. A couple days, emergency procedures, that's all it takes. It's, it's minimal training. Uh, you don't have to dedicate your career like Joan and I did to get the chance to fly in space. So it's going to allow more people to go. And hopefully that price keeps coming down. Reusability that we saw, that, that, that rocket ship landing very close by to where it took off from, you can turn it around fairly quickly. And so hopefully that price will continue to come down and more and more people will get to experience this. And it will help, I think, not just in research and projects that people want to do, but also in just a global perspective. The fragility and the beauty of our planet really sinks in when you get to see it from space. Yeah, I was just going to raise that with Joan Higginbotham, because when you talk to people such as yourselves who have been there and, and seen the Earth from that very rare vantage point, people do say it changes you, even if it is just for a fleeting few moments, that that, that, that perspective really has an impact. Did you find that to be the case, Joan? 
I absolutely did. I actually did a, a TED Talk in Bermuda over um, about two years ago about my experience in space and how, as I came back to Earth, I had a better perspective and appreciation, like Mass said, to the fragility of the Earth and its beauty and the fact that we really need to be very careful how we treat her because we only have one. Um, and then it just gave me a better appreciation for humanity um, and my my overall goal, What the promise I made was that um, to be kinder and gentler to humanity uh, because we're all in this world together. Um, what we do affects uh, the next person. Uh, and so I want to be a person who brings good uh, and change for the my, my fellow human. Well, it, it, this certainly is helping others to have that perspective as well. Um, and as I turn to you, Tom Costello, we had just seen the booster rocket reposition itself and come back down to Earth. And one of the extraordinary features of the Blue Origin vehicle is that it is reusable. And Blue Origin has much larger ambitions than just a joyride. Although let's keep a look at, keep an eye on this shot actually, because it looks like they might be about to knock on the door. And, say hello. <laughs> I don't yeah, know who's more excited. They're, literally, they're yeah. literally trying to get a thumbs up from every one of the astronauts inside to make sure that all of them are okay. That's what she's doing. Uh, looking at each one of them through the windows, making sure that they're okay. And then they're, now they're securing uh, the capsule. You know, we had uh, roughly 70 mile per hour winds here yesterday. So that's why they didn't do this as planned yesterday. They're doing it now instead. Uh, and it's a beautiful day here and no winds whatsoever. And so now we'll see this, how they're able to disembark. And the wires are quoting Shatner saying that was unlike anything they've described. So I, I think we'll hear more from him and from all of those who've had the experience of a lifetime as they take these few minutes to open the doors. And we'll see what our, our first few uh, seconds with them are. Would you expect with that brief time in space, Mike, that they'd have, you know, that the sea, they wouldn't have their sea legs, that they might feel a little jiggly or woozy or dizzy? Well, it's a pretty short time that they were up there. I, I think what we saw with the other crew, they were able to, uh, you know, stand up and get up and walk out and wave and, and move around. So I think that they'll probably be just fine. But just in case, I would suggest to them, and they'll probably be uh, doing this, just taking it a little bit slow, make sure they get up and feeling good before they move around too quickly. But uh, with just a few minutes of weightlessness, their adaptation coming back uh, should not be a big deal. Tom, we were just starting to talk about it, but I know we're keeping our eye on um, this capsule because we want to see those first images. But Blue Origin does have much larger ambitions. Tell us about that. Of the capsule and who was going to be checking on it. Uh, listen, right now, Blue Origin, and as you know, owned by Jeff Bezos, uh, they have much bigger ambitions. They want to go to the moon. Uh, they are in a, a fight back and forth with Elon Musk and SpaceX over getting to the moon and setting up a moon base and providing the infrastructure and the rockets to get there. Uh, NASA, though, has awarded SpaceX the lunar contracts, not uh, Jeff Bezos and not, of course, uh, Blue Origin. And that has been been a big bone of contention. Uh, Bezos, you know, even threatening legal action against NASA. Uh, and then you had, for example, Elon Musk telling Bezos, you can't get to the moon by suing your way there. Mm. Uh, real competition between Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. But at the, moment, at the moment, Elon Musk and SpaceX have the NASA contract to try to go to the moon, uh, to create and build a moon base, to provide the rockets to get there. SpaceX at the moment, uh, pardon me, uh, Blue Origin at the moment does not. I wouldn't give up on that, though. The infrastructure they have built here in the desert, I'll just tell you, Savannah, this is not fly by night. Mm. Uh, they have built a tremendous infrastructure. They are planning to go long and deep and for the long term. I don't know if you were able to keep your eye on the images as you were talking with us, Tom, but it looked like Jeff Bezos kind of knocking through the windows. I don't know. Is, it, is that who you think that was? It certainly looked like it to me, but it was hard to make out. I, I didn't get a clear view on my screen, but uh, that would make sense. I know that he is doing everything he can to be there and uh, be a part of this. He even he even told me last night he was tempted to stow away and be and take one of the extra seats that was not <laughs> taken. But clearly he decided to stay on the ground. Oh, and they received letters from the, the previous um, passengers, astronauts on the first Blue Origin flight. And they were said, oh, you're so lucky. We wish we could go back again. So I guess it's a little bit like a roller coaster that you wish you could go right back on and ride again the minute you land. 
I think you're absolutely right. Everybody who's done this has the same experience, whether you're on one of these types of uh, quick trips as a tourist or you're a NASA astronaut who goes to the station. How many times have you heard NASA astronauts say they spent three, four, five months up there and they can't go wait to go back? It's such a different experience, a life fulfilling experience. Uh, but it is astonishing how three to four minutes of weightlessness will completely change your viewpoint. And I'm now looking at, and you're going to see it in a second here, Bezos, it appears, is opening the hatch. Let's keep our eyes Again, peeled. thank you, everybody, for joining us live from West Texas at our launch site one. Our second human space flight crew has gone to space and back up over the Kármán line, just over 351,000 feet. We're awaiting Jeff Bezos, who is now opening the hatch. Yes. All of them appear healthy. All of them seem to be able to exit on their own power. He said, hello, astronauts, <laughs> as he poked his head through the hatch door. <laughs> There's Audrey Powers, a big hug from her sister. Captain Audrey Powers, the Kirk vice president of mission and flight William operations Shatter. at Blue Origin, the only Blue Origin employee. And there it is. Our customer, Chris Bosshausen, the first full Australian citizen to go to space and back. And Glenn DeVries. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that, Savannah. Some he big just, hugs. William Shatner just ones. said, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and away, it's well, I'll tell you, um, he was really nervous about this. Um, he said it on our air. He said it in conversations with me. He was nervous about this trip. He said, I really want to come back down. Let's listen, see if we can catch you know some what? of this. Get over here, people! The impression I have that I never ex expected to have is you shooting up. Is that the way death is? Whoop! And it's gone. Chase. It was so moving to me. This experience has been something unbelievable. You see, yeah, you know, uh, the weightless, my stomach went up. And I, 
This is so weird, but not as weird as the covering of blue. This is what I never expected. Oh, it's one thing to say, oh, the sky and the thing and the fragile. It's all true. But what isn't true, what, what is unknown until you do it, is... There's this pillow, there's this soft blue. Look at the beauty of that color. And it's so thin. And you're through it in an instant. It's what a. How, how, how thick is it? Do we know? I mean, the atmosphere. Is it a mile? Two no, miles? I mean, it's, I mean, it depends on how you measure because it thins out, but maybe 50 miles. Not but even. you're going yeah. 2,000 miles an hour. So you're through 50 miles of uh, whatever the mathematics is. Fast. Was. Yeah. Really you know, fast. it's like a beat and a beat, and suddenly you're through the blue. And, then it's and you're into black. Mm -hmm. And you're into, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's mysterious and galaxies and things. But what you see is black. And what you see down there is light, and that's the difference. And not to have this, you have done something. I mean, whatever those other guys are doing, what it, what isn't, they don't, I don't know about that. What you have given me is the most profound experience I can imagine. Uh, I'm so filled with emotion about what just happened. I, I just... It's extraordinary. Extraordinary. I hope I never recover from this. I hope that I can uh, maintain what I feel now. I, I don't want to lose it. It's so... It's so much larger than, than me and life. And it hasn't got anything to do with the little green planet, the blue orb, and the, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the enormity and the quickness and the suddenness of life and death of the oh my God. It has it's so beautiful. Beautiful, yes, beautiful in its way, but No, I mean your words. Oh my words. It's just amazing. I don't know, I can't even begin to express what I, I, what I would love to do is to communicate as much as possible the, the jeopardy, the, 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 the moment you see how vul the vulnerability of everything, it's so small. This air, which is keeping us alive, is, is thinner than your skin. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a sliver. It's, it's immeasurably small when you think in terms of the, of the universe. It's, a, it's not, it's negligible. This air, Mars doesn't have it. N nothing. I mean, this and wait, and when you think of wait, carbon dioxide change to oxygen, and what is it, twenty percent of some of that level that sustains our life? It's so thin. Mm -hmm. To, to to dirty it. I mean, that's another whole. And you shoot subject. through. What you were saying about shooting through it so fast, so quickly, fifty miles, and you're of, just in black. And you're, and you're in death. Yeah. In, in the moment. This is life. This is life, and that's death. And it's in a, in an instant. You go, wow, that's death. That's what I saw. That's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. I am I am overwhelmed. I have no idea. You know, we were talking earlier before going, well, you know, it's going to be different. Go, yeah, it's going to, and you have whatever that phrase is you have, that you have a different view of things. Uh, it doesn't begin to, to uh, explain, to, to, to describe what, what, it, what for me, I mean, everybody's going to, but, it, and this is now the commercial. It, everybody, it, it, it would be so important for everybody to have that experience through one means or another. I mean, maybe you could put it on 3D and <laughs> wear the goggles <laughs> and have that experience. I mean, that's that certainly is a technical possibility. But, but what you need also, we're lying there in, and I'm thinking, listen, one delay after another delay, we're lying there. I think, how do I feel? And I'm thinking, yeah, a little jittery here. And, and they move the pins. Oh, 
oh, there's something in the engine. They said, found an anomaly in the engine. They found an anomaly in the engine. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hold a little longer. Oh, you're going to hold a little longer. And I feel this, you know, the stomach, the, 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 the biome inside. And, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm, uh, I'm thinking I'm a little nervous here. Another delay. I'm a little more nervous. And then the thing starts. By the way, the simulation is they have to be warned. It's only a simulation. Mm -hmm. Everything else is much more. It doesn't powerful. capture. doesn't capture the, the, and besides which, the jeopardy. Bang! This thing hits. You go, oh, you know, <laughs> that wasn't anything like a simulation. The g forces The g forces what, What's going to happen to yeah. me? Am I going to be able to survive the g forces <laughs> You feel that? Yeah, Am I going to survive it? Yeah. And then I think, good Lord, that one. William Shatner you know, talking with Blue there. Origin what? founder uh, Jeff Bezos, feeling <laughs> all the feelings, <laughs> talking about oh uh, philosophy and um, his feeling of how profound that experience was. He said, I hope I never recover to Jeff Bezos as I bring in um, Tom Costello and that, that feeling that every astronaut has described. Apparently, Shatner feels in spades. I'd say he was a little starstruck. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, I had a conversation with him last night, and I was struck by how how much he, how much emotion he already felt going into this, and how profoundly and deeply he feels about trying to save the planet. And he was getting emotional in the conversation with me last night, and now to see this emotion, it's really quite something. It's really quite impressive. Ninety years old. <laughs> and one of the first things he said is to Jeff Bezos, "Everyone should have this experience." Well, we'll continue to watch this. You can find more on NBCNews.com and MSNBC full wrap up tonight on Nightly News. Most of you return to today. I'm Savannah Guthrie in New York.